And in many experiments, you require single-stranded DNA, specifically when you're synthesizing a probe or you're doing your maximum Gilbert sequencing. So here I show you a typical M13 swage vector. This is also known as a filamentous swage M13. And if you see here, there is a single-stranded DNA surrounded by a protein coat. And this protein coat itself is made up of several different proteins. For example, here you have the P3, and then you have the smaller one, that is P6 here. Then the lateral side is, uh, is basically uh, covered over by the protein called P8. And then if you come to the posterior end here, you have two types of proteins, P7 and P9 that are represented here. Right? So this is your M13 uh, filamentous swatch. Uh, this is around 900 nanometers into 9 nanometers in dimensions. Uh, virus contains single-stranded circular DNA. So this, if you see, is a single-stranded circular DNA in contrast to the double-stranded DNA that was present in Lambda Farge. Here you have a single-stranded circular DNA, uh, around 6407 nucleotides long, and uh, the census plus a strand, and then it has around 10 genes in total. M13 contains a single-stranded circular DNA represented with blue color here. And this contains 10 genes. And importantly, all 10 genes are essential for the replication of M13. So there is nothing that you can remove here from the genome in terms as we could do in case of uh, lambda phage vectors, where uh, it was very easy to remove the genes of the lysogenic life cycle. And that also created space for additional uh, size of inserts. Right. So here in this case, nothing is indispensable. All 10 genes have to be present. I'll show you the genome in more details as we move along. Then uh, you can, uh, the virus can infect the E. coli via F. coli. Uh, replication of FARG does not result in host cell lysis. In contrast to lambda FARG again, M13 infection does not result in cell death or cell lysis. The cell continues to live, however, with a slightly different phenotype and, and uh, metabolism. And uh, as I said earlier, all tell genes are essential for the survival of M13 filamentous phage. So there is only a single 507 nucleotide intergenic sequence into which new DNA could be inserted without disrupting one of these genes. And this region includes the replication of origin, which must remain intact. So there is a lot of uh, you know stringency in where you can insert your DNA here. But then, of course, M13 offers some advantages over lambda phage in the sense that you could uh, generate single-stranded DNA here. So there are 10 genes in the viral DNA, and in contrast to lambda phage, all are essential for viral replication. And there is only a single 507 nucleotide intergenic space where the uh, the gene of interest or the DNA of interest can be inserted without disrupting the the indispensable genes of M13. And this region includes a replication for region, which must also remain intact. So there is further uh, stringency on where you can put in an insert here. Uh, so if you look at the genome of M13, it is single standard circular DNA. There is M13 original replication, and to the downstream of which you have the genes number 2, 10, 5, 7, 9, 8, 3, 6, 1, 4, arranged in that order. Right? So this is 10 genes, and all genes are essential. This is typically the region where you can insert, or this is the region where you can have your uh, DNA of interest inserted. Uh, M13 origin of replication, or very commonly in the actual vector, you use F1 origin of replication, uh, has to remain intact for the viral DNA to replicate. Right? So in the first step, the viral DNA is transferred into the host cell via the F line. So this is the infection stage. So once the transfection happens and the viral DNA, which is single-stranded and circular, is transferred into the host cell, it first converts into a double-stranded form that is known as the replicative form. And as an name indicates, it replicates and forms around 100 copies of its DNA. Right? So here you are. Uh, once inside the host cell, the viral DNA becomes double-stranded or replicative form by synthesizing the minus a strand using bacterial DNA polymerase and multiplies for in about 100 replicative form molecules. So this one here represents a replicative form and this uh, basically replicates itself into 100 different copies. And once around 100 different copies have been formed, it is enters into what is known as the transcriptional and translational stage. 
and the viral DNA uses the host bacterial machinery to synthesize its proteins. So here you are, uh, the MANUS template serves as template for viral transcription and viral proteins are transcribed. So viral protein expression happens and you have different types of viral proteins getting expressed. Remember there are 10 genes and all 10 genes are essential for viral replication and packaging, right? Uh, once the viral proteins have started to express, the virus enters to the next phase of life cycle where it is now going to synthesize its single-stranded DNA for packaging into fresh viral particles. The viral encoded single-stranded binding proteins uh, coming from gene 2 eventually force asymmetric DNA replication of replicative form DNA via the rolling circle model. Only the plus strands are synthesized from here on and packaged and released. So here you are, you have the uh, M13 rolling circle model of replication where the single-stranded DNA is, is, is directly synthesized. And then of course it is assembled into a part particle and these part particles are released into the environment. Remember the host cell is not lysed here. So the host cell continues to live, however, with a slightly changed phenotype and metabolism. So in contrast to lambda fast, the infected cells do not lie here, um, but grow and divide at a slower rate than uninfected cells and release the virus particles. Up to a thousand fast particles may be released into the medium per cell per generation. Uh, since M13 infections do not result in bacterial cell death, uh, M13 infections appear as turbid plants. So next we move on to see how the M13 vectors have evolved. And if you remember, I already told you that all 10 genes in M13 vectors are essential for replication of the virus, whether it is recombinant or non-recombinant. And therefore, there is very restrictive space where you can insert your gene of interest or DNA of interest. So here in this case, uh, there is a very small intergenic space uh, in between gene 4 and gene 2, which also holds your origin of replication. So you could either insert your DNA of interest here, or you could insert your DNA of interest here. So this is the only region of around 507 uh, nucleotides where you can insert your uh, DNA of interest. And that too, you have to avoid inserting into the origin of replication, else of course your virus, viral DNA will not replicate. As we look into the evolution of M13 vectors, you will realize that people modified this space here so as to ensure that you're able to easily insert uh, DNA of interest here. And also you could have a blue white selection strategy. So here you are. First, of course, what was done was to introduce a lag Z prime locus uh, to the right side of the origin of replication. And uh, this is your M13 MP1 vector. So you could basically digest this lag Z prime locus here and insert your DNA of interest here. Uh, that would allow the recombinant colony to not synthesize beta galactosidase and therefore remain white in color, while the uh, while the non-recombinant colonies would be blue in color. Then, of course, uh, what people further did was to insert a dedicated e and site within this laxi prime locus. So this was known as M13MP2. And then over time, uh, scientists introduced a multiple cloning site within the laxi prime locus so as to allow for choices of restriction sites that you could use to insert your DNA of interest. So this is your M13MP7, right? So here you are. M13 vector was developed by modifying the M13 genome by introducing a laxi prime between origin of replication and gene 2. So this is your gene 2 here. This is your origin of replication and you reduce a lag Z prime locus here in between them. Uh, eco one site was introduced into lag Z prime by site directed mutagenesis. And this is your M13 MP2 vector. So this is your M13 MP2 vector where you had a dedicated eco one site inserted into the lag Z prime locus, allowing for clear selection of uh, uh, of the recombinants based on blue-white screening. And then, of course, uh, what people wanted was additional choices in terms of the restric restriction sites that can be used also to ensure that you could have a directed uh, insertion. And therefore, what you introduced was a multiple cloning site or a polylinker at the same position, allowing for now a combination of re restriction sites to be used. So the final vector allows for blue-white selection. So let's now look at the uniqueness and advantages of M13 vector as compared to other vectors that are available to us. So, so here is our M13 vector and the single most important advantage that you have with M13 vector is that you can obtain single-stranded DNA here. And uh, in the initial days of DNA sequencing, 
single-stranded DNA was required for both Maxim Gilbert and uh, Sanger sequencing. And you could also require a single-stranded DNA when you're making a proof for your southern or northern hybridization, as also in case of site-directed mutagenesis, which we'll discuss in a later lecture. Then, of course, uh, another important uh, application of M13 vectors is in basically studying protein-protein interactions. And what you can do actually here is you can, with the help of uh, recombinant DNA, you can synthesize a fusion protein, a protein that is fused to one of the proteins that is getting expressed on the surface by the M13 phage. So, so here, as you see, protein 8 has around 2,700 copies along the uh, viral coat. So most commonly, protein 8 is used uh, and basically what is synthesized is a fusion protein with a protein of interest. And because protein 8 is localized onto the surface of the phage, the fusion protein, the new protein that is synthesizing along with it, also gets exposed on the surface of the Fudge. So that is typically what is known as pass display. And because now your protein of interest is on the surface of the fudge and is immobilized onto the surface of the fudge, this can now be used for its interaction studies. You, you can study your antigen antibody bonding or other protein protein interactions that may be possible here. Right. So this is uh, an added advantage with M13 fudge vectors. Uh, the only disadvantage that you have with M13 fudge vectors is the size of the recombinant DNA that you can get in here. So only about 2 kb of insert can be amplified. Uh, and uh, this is because all 10 genes that are uh, there in M13 are essential for the phage survival in contrast to lambda phage, where you could remove the genes responsible for the lysogenic life cycle. Since only 2 kb of insert can be amplified here, is there a way where, where we can increase the insert size in case of M13 vectors? So what the scientists have done is to combine the useful features of plasmid and M13 vector into a single vector that is known as phagmid. So here is your phagmid. This phagmid is known as P-blue script 2. Uh, the total size is around 3 kb. Uh, if you see, apart from the regular features of a plasmid, including a, a laxi prime locus and an MCS, and also an ampicillin resistance marker and an origin of replication of the plasmid source, that is a puck origin of replication, this also contains an F1 or phage origin of replication, which allows for uh, viral mediated uh, replication and packaging as single stranded DNA, as in M13. Right? So, as mentioned, one of the major disadvantages of M13 vectors is the size of the insert. Uh, not more than 2 kb can be allowed because, because all the 10 genes of the phage are required for the replication and packaging of the M13 phage. So to overcome this limitation, scientists developed what is known as phasmid or phasmid. Uh, this is basically a combination of the best of the features of the plasmid and the M13 phage put together into a single vector known as a phasmid. So phasmids are plasmids that contain an M13 origin of replication in addition to the plasmid origin of replication. So you have an uh, M13 on F1 origin of replication. Also, you have a or plasmid origin of replication. A phasmid can be replicated as a plasmid and can also be packaged as a single-stranded DNA in virus. So the advantage here is this can work both as a plasmid as well as a virus. And because the 10 genes that are required for uh, M13 phage are not there, you have an additional space where your uh, gene of interest, a longer DNA of interest can be inserted into this. Since no viral genes are there in the phasmid, uh, they can support up to 10 kb of insert size. And of course, because there are no viral genes here to package it as a virus, you need a helper virus alongside. So also for the same reason, helper virus infection is required to allow the phasmid to package as a virus particle. So now we see that in a phasmid, we can combine the best features of a plasmid and M13 phage, giving us longer insert size and also a generation of a single-stranded DNA that can be used for sequencing or for probe making and also for expression. So now the question is, can we also combine the best features of a lambda phage and a plasmid to, again, uh, enable the plasmid to carry a larger insert size? And the answer to this is yes. Uh, what we have developed is what is known as cosmids. Cosmids, as the name indicates, they have uh, cos sites from coming from the lambda phage and therefore can allow for package of the 
DNA into viral particle and also mixes coming from the plasmid where they have the plasmid origin for replication. So this can behave again both as a plasmid as well as a viral particle. Cosmids combine the useful features of plasmids and lambda phages uh, and therefore they allow a larger insert size because none of the viral genes are present except for the cos site. You could have uh, insert as big as 50 kb shear. Right? Important features of cosmids include the cos sites. Sticky ends of lambda phage facilitate packaging of recombinant molecule. This is of lambda phage origin. So these are cost sites and these are coming from the lambda phage origin. Origin of replication uh, allows plasmids to replicate like plasmid and host bacteria. So you have an origin of replication of the plasmid origin. Allows for, uh, uh, for replication of the plasmid. Then there are resistance markers for selection of transformants and non-transformants. And as I mentioned, since cosmids are just about 5.4 kb in length, uh, and can be packaged by lambda phage. The inserts as large as 50 kb can be inserted here and can be faithfully replicated or expressed. So just to summarize the work we've done in this lecture, we started first with lambda phage. 